New day, new drama. A lot of people like to use the term nuclear drama and for once I actually do genuinely believe so because something happened recently that will actually change the entire space of the Gacha CC community, specifically the Honkai Star Rail but I'm sure this will leak out to other areas. Now this is going to be a unscripted and more of a discussion between me and you. I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below because I'm not an expert here and uh, I didn't quite have time to collect all of the resources and information but I do have some important points to kind of talk about and uh, I don't really want to get caught in the crossfire here because it's, it's a sensitive topic but I do think it's still important to discuss. Now if you haven't seen what's going on I'll give you the gist of it. My definition may not be 100% accurate as uh, I couldn't quite get all the documents in time to make this video as I got a bit busy but the gist of it is in Honkai Star Rail preferred content creators are going to have access to the characters one to two weeks early that's the main thing so they can make videos before the characters come out but here's the weird part that's really going a bit crazy that we need to talk about apparently if other people react to the content they put out due to the test servers that can have big negative impacts on their channel whether it be you know video takedowns because technically it's like leaked content or not officially out there now that's honestly where the big issue lies certain content creators which are preferred get access to content early and then everyone else not really being able to talk about it which is basically making everyone feel extremely unfair we all knew about the hoyoverse blacklist community people that kind of speak out or overly criticize hoyoverse now i said overly criticize because um you know sensitive topic a lot of people recently have been upset at people for not voicing criticism about the game and instead feeling a bit disingenuous and uh, now this issue's come again in kind of full circle somewhat because now we have the preferred creators being pushed even more so now people kind of fear for the authenticity now there was a screenshot going around now I don't have the files on me you probably would have seen it but the gist of the screenshot is you have early access to these characters you have to screen the videos with us so Hoyoverse in the, in the server before they upload it however they use the screening process and basically they can't and now this is where a lot of issues came in it basically said you can't just say a character at e1 without the character's like cone or something is complete trash that's one of the examples people said in this server that they're not allowed to do now that statement as a whole is pretty bad because it basically said you can't say this character's trash uh you have to say something else so i do see how it kind of puts a lot of people in fear of content creators becoming disingenuous due to you know this issue who do you trust now that you know these new people are going to have these preferred creators are going to have access to characters before everyone else they get to come up with content before everyone else but on top of that they're not allowed to speak their mind so with all that being said it's very important to say you need to go ahead and watch two videos uh one go and watch the video that mtash made he made a new video and it's a uh, quite a it's quite a difficult video to watch because uh, yeah he's he's fairly authentic in the video and he, and he talks about how this is going to affect him i i don't necessarily agree with all the points but i'll i'll get to that in a bit and then the second video you got to go watch is braxophone's response video because braxophone is one of the preferred creators and he's kind of being not i don't know if they're thrown under the bus but he's come under a bit of an, a small i don't know maybe people are not very happy with him because of this but in my opinion, he seems to be just an unintentional uh, victim of whatever's going on. Because, okay, now it's, 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 a tough, it's a tough thing to discuss. Because if you work too closely with Hoyoverse and you do all these things, you get known as a Hoyoverse shill. Now, for me, I, I think I've done irreversible damage thanks to my recent videos. I'm sure someone at Hoyoverse has seen the stuff I kept yapping about. Basically, don't give the company money. I think I'm on the blacklist for life. But... I think I've already shot myself before. But with other people, yeah, people don't want to be seen as that person who doesn't quite have a voice and opinion for themselves. And it's a, it's a really damning thing to say because imagine you make guides and your entire reputation gets tarnished because people say you're a Hoyover shell, for example. So I'm aware of the dangers there. But what do I think about this entire situation? One, yes, from this moment on, it will 100% affect content moving forward. Um, this will... Cause I think ish more issues with the content creator space. The gotcha content creator space is uh, somewhat toxic in my opinion. It always has been and I think it always will be. 
um, purely because people just can't seem to get along here. I don't know why. And one reason was um, this kind of uh, control that Hayobos has. You don't know who to trust. Certain people get contracts. Some people don't get contracts and you're not told why. So who do you believe? Who's telling the truth? Who is who? Who is a Hoyobos shell? Difficult stuff to deal with here. But here's the thing. Now, I might get a lot of hate for this. Now, I think it's fair to say I've I've earned my stripes in saying that I'm not necessarily the guy that's going to jump and defend Hoyobus at every single moment. Basically saying and pointing out their bad practices and, you know, all the stuff I don't really like about Hoyobus in my boycotting episodes when I did that a whole bunch. So at least hopefully you can believe that I'm being authentic when I say it. That I don't think they are doing what they're doing out of uh, malice. They're not trying to hurt or harm anyone. And I don't believe they're trying to exclude people. The big issue people are feeling like they're being excluded. Their careers are at risk. And it's just unfair. I don't think they did that on purpose. I think that was something that was that kind of happened unintentionally. Now why is because all this started because they needed to combat leaks. People would leak characters early. And if they had characters coming out on the internet early. Like they always do all of the time. It's something that I see. You guys probably see videos of the characters. Kits and information. And you know animations. The entire character gets. You, you could see what the character does. And how they perform. A week before they come out. Two weeks before they come out even. So they're trying to combat this issue. And they felt like this was the ideal way to solve it. By just giving access to the, the creators that they trust. And now because they did this, everything's exploded. Uh, a lot of people are saying stuff like censorship, uh, unfair treatment and stuff. But I do somewhat see Hoyo versus perspective. Not that I agree with it, but I do kind of understand. Um, the thing is, I believe other games do do a similar thing where they carefully vet new stuff that come out for video games. You know, with trusted creators. So you can't hate a company for doing that. And it's similar to, you know, how when, you know, you have people that make video game reviews, they get the game before everyone else, just so they can make their review of the game in time. It's a very similar thing. But because it has such, you know, strong effects, a lot of people are upset about it. And, you know, Hoyoverse has definitely not had a good reputation lately. Um, their reputation has really, really gone down the toilet, in my honest opinion. And they need to do some work to fix it. And uh, the way they tackle this problem really didn't help it. And uh, a lot of people, I mean, it, it's a bit tricky because th this wasn't like a public announcement. I believe some messages got leaked. So what, when, you, when you're seeing like this much of the story, it, it, it's very hard to make up the correct narrative. But anyway, I'm not defending Hoyoverse here. I'm just explaining explaining some perspectives, being devil's advocate, if you may. So they tried to fix it because of the leak issue. So they did this so they can get their preferred content out, you know, in time and do whatever they had to do. Pardon me if I make any mistakes, because again, I haven't had all the time in the world to put these points together and collect all the references. So if I'm incorrect, please let me know in the comments and uh, I, I will make another video correcting myself. Yeah, this issue anyway only exists because of Hoyoverse and that's the big problem. Hoyoverse sucks in terms of the management of their assets. They, for some reason, can't just do their job better, so now they're affecting other people. That's how I see it. I don't see it as some big conspiracy theory to attack or blacklist creators. I think Hoyoverse has a problem, and they put a really bad band-aid on the problem. Like, this doesn't quite fix the issue. I mean, it does kind of, but like, it's just, you could have just properly fixed the issue. Hack, you know, hone down on the leaks, fix your system, do something about it. You gotta fix the leak issue, not by ruining other people's uh, livelihood. So that's why they did it. It, w it wasn't trying to attack people. Now, in terms of the MTASHED and uh, Reaxophone situation, in MTASHED the video, he basically just gave his live reaction. You can tell he's visibly upset about the entire thing. Now, in the moment, he was clearly upset. I do think it was a bit of an overreaction. I don't think it was an overreaction. I think it was a genuine reaction because in the moment, it's probably hard to process. And then you can't really think about it too much in the moment. But the stuff he was saying, I don't necessarily agree with. Like him saying his career was over again and again. Again, I understand why he said it, but I don't necessarily agree with it. Because one amazing thing about Genshin and Honkai and these games is that you can make so much different type of content and the, there's, a, there's a large avenue in this content which basically locks it off for people that aren't uh, Hoyoverse shills if you would say however you want to put it yeah but there's still more content to make so I don't think it's really career ruining 
and definitely someone like mtash can survive making something else apart from guides uh because guides is really really is gonna hit people hard and that's the big issue obviously mtash makes guides and theory crafting and stuff but i think he'll be able to do fine he will be able to keep making content in this space and lately he's made a lot more kind of reactionary content uh, less so um coupled cl closely to the game itself more about the overall space so I, I think he'd be doing fine in my honest opinion but i do feel sorry for him because he he kind of did nothing wrong but suddenly out of nowhere he just woke up and his entire content avenue changed like that sucks that, that's just how it is his career is not over but it, it it does suck because now he has to take the time to kind of figure out what he wants to do and how can he figure out this situation so not a good situation not a good situation hope it goes well for him i know he'll, he'll come out the other side stronger i know it but here's the thing with braxophone braxophone came out with a video basically debunking a lot of the things people say now braxophone is essentially sponsored by how your verse to make all these videos if you don't want to say they're sponsored but he's basically in a partnership which is basically like a sponsorship like a long-term sponsorship if you ask me at least uh where they pay him to make content so that's the fact he gets paid by how your to make videos this is how this stuff works now, I think Braxophone has come under fire, but unfortunately, I don't think it's fair to really blame him because I think it's like he's getting attacked because he's doing his job. And uh, I don't think that's quite fair. Like, what is he supposed to do? Just be like, no, I do not accept this business opportunity you are handing out to me. And it's quite funny regarding the recent, you know, not the recent anymore, but like the drama that came out a month ago where Braxophone was in a bad situation due to the fact that he felt like he could, was missing out on business opportunities due to being uh, pushed away from the gotcha space due to other people talking badly about him behind his back and stuff like that to the point where, you know, he missed out on opportunities like this and now he's kind of getting, a, you know, he's getting, he's, he's getting some not nice things said about him because he has these opportunities given to him now. Kind of funny but it is what it is so he does say how it's not necessarily you have to abide by how your versus words it's more like they have to screen the videos in case they say some overt misinformation and um you know in case they show things that aren't really meant to be shown to the public yet that's what i got that's how other how other games do it how other companies do it they need to control what people see and what people don't see because they have you know schedules to hit you could say that's me defending Hoyoverse, but that's just how I see the situation. Um, but yeah, the, the phrase they said, where they said, you cannot say a character is flat out trash at E0 without the light cone. That raised a lot of red flags for me. And I hope it was just kind of a, you know, a bad example to give. Because Grexophone even said he made videos calling out Dia, saying how, you know, she wasn't very good, basically. And he showed it in his video, which I feel like, you know, valid makes makes sense makes sense so i hate that they use that example and i hope it's really not true but uh you know it's just a mobile game <laughs> it's a mobile I, yeah you spend money in this mobile game so i understand you know it's a very it's a very time intensive game so i'm not just gonna try belittling it saying it's just an anime mobile game because i know a lot of people take this stuff very seriously but the issue with the viewer is that you don't know if you know if the character actually sucks at e0 without the light on, which is how a lot of free to play players play that big content creators aren't going to tell you and it, it's it's a whole mess it's a whole mess because who do you trust now i don't know so i don't necessarily think there's any big bad enemies in this whole situation obviously the person to blame is hoyoverse because they caused this problem and their solution to the problem was absolutely atrocious i don't think any content creators deserve to be attacked i do think the gacha space is big enough where people can make so much different kinds of content and still succeed of course people are going to feel unfairly treated if they don't have the same opportunities as other people do but unfortunately that's just how it works in this space sometimes like i don't think i'll ever be in the uh hoyo versus good books and i don't think i really want to anyway i i, I kind of want to be able to say the stuff that i want to say uh and i wouldn't necessarily want to work too closely with hoyoverse after what i've seen from them so for me it it's, doesn't change much uh but for the viewers it changes quite a bit and it's going to change how people have to tackle content creation from now on because things are going to change yeah i am sorry if i didn't provide you with any concrete um endings here that's because i don't know i don't think it's that big of a deal that other content creators are pretending it is. I think a lot of people are getting... I think a lot of people are jumping up and down about this new thing. But I do believe it is something that happens in the industry in other places. So I don't think it's necessarily a Hoyoverse being evil situation. Even though I am definitely not a fan of Hoyoverse as a whole, as a company. 
uh, how they do their business. I'm not a fan. And I'm personally waiting for Weathering Waves to give that a good go. Because I'm excited. I do like how Pro Games operates. I love the previous game PGR. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely not trying to defend Hoyoverse here. But I think everyone does need to chill out. Honestly, this video is probably not very good. Thank you for watching. I'm going to end it here because if you can't tell, I don't know what to say. Please let me know what you guys think about this because I very well will make a follow-up video based on what you guys say. See you guys in the next one.